Morning everybody. I think I missed a video yesterday, so maybe I'll try to make it up and make a couple videos today, but we'll see. You know, just do it as I can. Anyway, uh, recently John was talking about uh, Tracy and Slim and a few people that were in the scene that haven't really talked a whole lot and kind of respecting that and understanding that and I, I definitely agree with that. And I'll probably have some stories around my encounters with most of those people as well because uh, we were all in that scene pretty much the same time. I guess today I would just kind of mention uh, Slim Moon because John did mention that Slim Moon uh, kind of hung out with us for a while. Mostly, he was one of those people that I met mid-80s, I want to say 84, 85, somewhere in that period. And uh, it was when we used to go pretty regularly to the Gorilla Gardens or the Gorilla Room. I forget what it was called at that point. Um, probably the main punk slash metal venue of about that period, 84, 85, in Seattle. It, um, we'll talk more about the Gorilla Gardens at some other time because definitely it featured pretty strongly in that mid-80s uh, underground music scene in Seattle. Uh, but, uh, like, similar to Buzz, which I'll also talk about at some point, uh, Slim was one of those guys that I would talk to pretty regularly. Um, we weren't the type of people that stood outside until the main band played that often. Like, there's a lot of people that would hang out and just talk and smoke and do whatever, and then when the main band came, like DOA or whoever it was that was the headliner, they'd go and watch them and all the, the uh, under the acts that were performing before them, all the opening acts, they would just kind of ignore. And we actually like to watch the opening acts because there's a lot of new bands coming out and you could really find some cool stuff that way. I mean, that was how we found the Melvins, how we found lots of bands. Anyway, um, Slim was one of those guys, if I did happen to be outside, if it was either between bands or there was really a band we really didn't want to watch or whatever it was, he was one of those guys that I would talk to sometimes, especially around the Gorilla Gardens. And uh, if you don't know who Slim Moon is, look up Kill Rock Stars Records. He, I think, is the founder of Kill Rock Stars, if not the co-founder. Um, and they were really influential in um, the independent music scene in the Northwest, uh, especially in the 90s and early 1000s, uh, most notably um, releasing um, some of the early and major releases by uh, Slater Kinney and by uh, Elliot Smith who John talked about and we saw quite a few times. Anyway, Slim and I used to hang out quite a bit and he was just this skinny guy. And I, I do remember, you know, we talked a lot about music and a lot about, you know, bands. And I remember him being a little different at the time, which I really appreciate. Um, at that time, it was really, uh, a lot of people were very like, I don't know, punk rock, hardcore, you know, Spikes, Mohawk, whatever, and he kind of was already in his own groove. I remember talking to him, and he was going to go see like the Cult, or he was into other bands than just straight up, you know, punk rock type bands. Uh, also, his I feel like his style was a little different too. You know, he, he's just kind of a unique guy, uh, really cool guy, and um, a lot of fun to talk to. And I would say that we became at least friends to some degree. Uh, we didn't like hang out all the time, but we hung out at shows quite a bit. And eventually, uh, the band I was in at that time, uh, The Grind, we played quite a few shows in that area, uh, or in that era, I should say, up in uh, Seattle at the Gorilla Gardens. Somehow, eventually, uh, Slim got on stage with us, and he'd do the spoken word thing, and we'd just play along with him. I don't remember exactly how that happened, other than we were just friends, and we were like, come up on stage, let's do this. Um, in fact, he even did it uh, in a chaos radio recording that we did uh, at Evergreen State College as The Grind. Uh, and it was his song, The Black, or I guess his poem, The Black, uh, which he did eventually release on a record, I believe in the 90s, on his own uh, solo album. So uh, the first performances of The Black were with us. Uh, I'm sure if he ever does talk about those early years, um, I'm sure he would remember that. So I will put a link to the black, if I can find it, at the bottom of this video, so you can see kind of what that sounded like when he re-recorded it. At some point, I'm sure my brother, I think, has a copy of that uh, Chaos Radio show, and I could uh, talk a little more about that at that point. Anyway, have fun, y'all, and uh, y'all, yeah, Alabama. We'll talk later about what it's like to be a Northwest punk in Alabama as well. Anyway. 
Have a good day.